Okay, so we'll move on to the exercise for today, which is sh should be hopefully pretty cruisy. Uh, it's just going to be an HTML CSS core principles review. So it might have been might have been about a year since anyone has kind of done this stuff. So I uh, just want to just want to make sure that that some of it has still stuck around uh, in the old brain matter. Uh, so what I want you to do is uh, just create a simple, uh, fairly generic page layout. Uh, I want it to be a center aligned layout. I want you to include a tiled background image for the body. Uh, I've got a couple of links to sites where you can download uh, tileable patterns if you don't feel like making your own. I want a header section containing uh, a logo image that links to this page or to the home page. Uh, no need to create a logo, you can just use a placeholder image there. Uh, I want a heading with the site name which you align to the bottom right of the header section. Uh, I want a horizontal main navigation using an unordered list uh, with hover and active current link states. And then for the main content section, I want a two or a three column content section containing a left and or right sidebar with uh, a vertical submenu and sidebar content. In fact, I don't really care so much if you don't put the vertical submenu in there, just some content in the sidebar. Um, a middle column for the main content, which contains uh, a heading two for the article or the content title, uh, some paragraphs of text. You can just use placeholder text or lorem ipsum if you want. Uh, somewhere among the paragraphs I want you to include one left aligned image and one right aligned image of anything you want. Uh, include a caption with at least one of the images. Uh, make one of the images a thumbnail version of a larger image that links to the full sized image. And a footer section with uh, a copyright notice and contact details of the mail to email address. Uh, so if you can do all that and it's a breeze, then I'm pretty happy that you've got a decent enough foundation for us to uh, continue on with future stuff. So here's a screenshot of an example that I did, uh, which matches up that. Um, I don't. It's it's. It's going to be kind of generic because we haven't specified any content, so don't worry too much about critifying it up. Uh, I'm con mainly concerned that you can um, write nice clean code uh, that has style and, style and structure separated, uh, that you're comfortable with laying things out on the page, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So... I just have a note down here, make sure that you employ the best practices that you hopefully learned uh, in Intro to Web. So it means separation, structure and style, no tables for layouts, no use of deprecated HTML attributes such as a line, uh, semantically meaningful markup, uh, meaning if you're going to create an ID for your sidebar, call it something like sidebar rather than div1. Um, Resize your images in Photoshop, not in the HTML and CSS, so as not to waste bandwidth, uh, and things like including alt attributes for the images, etc., etc., all that stuff. Okay, uh, and then you can check that it validates with the HTML and CSS validator linked there. And once you've done that, uh, I'll get you to uh, complete the HTML and CSS quizzes at W3 schools. Uh, and if you can do all that, then I'm pretty happy that you've got a solid foundation for us to build upon for the rest of this unit. Um, now, if you get to the end of that and you've struggled with it, um, don't stress too much. just means that you need to do a little bit of review. So have a look at... Um, either these W3Schools links from HTML and CSS or some of the other links that I specified up here and just brush up on the stuff that um, gave you trouble. Um, usually the things that give people trouble are things like the, the um, CSS box model. So 
Um, uh, so displaying things in line of block level elements and all that stuff and floating, floating and clearing elements successfully. Usually I find they're the two things that people uh, tend to kind of struggle with. Um, okay, so you've got a couple of options. You can go ahead uh, at your own pace and whip this out uh, as quickly as you want if you feel really confident. I'm going to go through and demonstrate it up here. Um, so feel free to uh, either follow along or just watch what I'm doing and make notes so you can do it later. I'll probably go reasonably quick. I don't really have time to stop and help people out individually, but if you do have questions about anything I'm doing, um, please just yell out and, and ask me and I'll, I'll try and clarify what I'm doing. Uh, okay, so I'm going to try and not look at this image um, while I'm doing it because when you're doing it the first time, you don't have the completed thing to look at. So I'm going to try and do this kind of from scratch. The first thing I'm going to do is draw out a, uh, a really simple wireframe of, of, of what those requirements uh, dictate that the structure needs to be. So the first thing I need is, if this is my browser window. The first thing I need is a centralized layout, so I'm going to need some sort of container element to contain everything within, and it's going to be margins here. Then we've got a header section with a logo on the left and a type title down here, aligned to the bottom right, and a horizontal navigation, we are going to have active states, and then I'm just going to do a two column layout here. So we'll have, say we go sidebar and content, okay, then we have sidebar heading, and then some content, and then and inside here we want a right aligned image and a left aligned image and this one has a caption that's it for the main body and then footer and that is a Okay, so the only thing that I have set up so far is a folder uh, with the images folder. Uh, so to save a bit of time, I'm not going to go through and, and recreate these. So what I've got here is a very small background texture, which is probably hard to see what it, what it actually is there. Um, but it's essentially just a uh, subtle uh, 45 degree angle uh, grey and darker grey striping. Uh, and then I've got my two content images. I've got Lobster Cat and Lobster Dog Thumbnail. And uh, then the full size Lobster Dog, which we'll link to. And then my logo placeholder there. Okay, so there are the images that I need, and I don't have anything else. Okay, so what I'm going to do in my editor of choice is create a new HTML file. Alright, and I'll delete that, make it blank, and a new uh, CSS file which I'll call style.css okay alright so I've got a, a blank index.html file and a blank style.css file so the first thing I'm actually going to do is put as much of the content in as I can without actually styling it uh, and, and this is usually a good idea because uh, you can see 
that the content is still readable and the flow of the content is, is still uh, logical uh, if, if the style sheets happen to either fail to load or there's a device that for whatever reason uh, does not support style sheets uh, and also for things like uh, accessibility um, for screen readers and such which expect to go through uh, the content uh, uh, from top to bottom and, and be able to read it out in a logical order. Okay, so I'm going to start with an HTML5 um, document. Um, Make this font a bit bigger. Okay, so HTML5, very simple doc type, just doc type HTML. Uh, I'll just set the language to uh, English and the character set to UTF-8. Okay, so that's pretty much all you have to do to set up an HTML document. Uh, I will add a title here. So I'm going to call my site uh, Lobster Pets. And within the body, I am going to uh, okay. So we'll we'll go based on the uh, layout that we've got here. So I'll I'll create all of the sections, but I won't necessarily style them. So I've got my body, and then inside of that, I've got a uh, a, a div element which contains everything else. So I will call that uh, call this container. You may also commonly see that called wrap, or whatever. Doesn't really matter so much as long as it's a semantically meaningful name. Okay, and then inside of that, uh, we're going to have a uh, a header div. Okay, so uh, now you could create this as a div if you want. I'm going to use the HTML5 element header. Makes really no difference at all. Um, other than it's a little bit more semantically meaningful to use that tag now uh, and a little bit easier to read. So we've got the header, we've got the navigation. Again, I'm going to use the HTML tag nav. For that, we've got the uh, we've got the sidebar. Which sorry, I'll do the content here first. Uh, now I'm going to use the HTML5 tag article, and the sidebar I'm going to use a side, also HTML5 tag. Um, and then we've got the footer element, which again I will use the HTML5 footer tag. <clears throat> the other good thing about using these HTML5 tags is it reduces the requirement for me to add IDs or classes to a lot of these, uh, because if they were all divs I couldn't, in order to target them specifically, I'd have to give them an ID. Uh, in this case, I don't really need to, although some of them I still am because it's feasible that I would have, for example, multiple articles or multiple um, multiple asides, for example. So for the article, I will give this an ID of main content. Uh, for the aside, I will give it an ID of uh, sidebar. For the navigation, because it's possible that I would have more than one navigation, I'll give it an ID of main nav. Uh, footer, I think I'm only going to have one footer, so I'll leave that. And header, likewise, so I'll leave that. Alright, now let's go and put stuff inside the header. So, inside the header I have my logo, which will be an image element. And... It is inside of a subdirectory called images and then uh, logo.png. Okay, and 
it's always good practice to specify the width and height of your images so that uh, the layout can make space for them while they're loading and not have to re-render the page after they've loaded. So this nicely tells me the dimensions of this image here, 150 by 100 pixels. So I'm going to set the width and height of the image attributes to that. Okay, and it's good practice to put in a alt attribute just in case the image doesn't load and also for accessibility, people who can't actually see the image. Uh, and so I'm just going to call this logo. Okay, now let's make a little bit more room. Okay, and after that, I'm going to have the heading one, which has my site title, which is called Lobster Lobsterhead. Okay. Next, we have the navigation. Okay, so. Uh, it's almost universally agreed that the semantically correct way to, uh, to structure navigation in the HTML is by using a, a list, usually an unordered list, uh, because when you have a series of navigation items, really what you have there is a list of navigation items. Uh, so um, I doubt you'll find many people that argue against that, so that is what we're going to stick with an unordered list which contains uh, some list items. Um, now if anyone's wondering these little things that I'm doing here, like I just did then, to create quickly five list items with uh, links inside of them. Uh, that's called uh, that's called Zen coding. Uh, it's a plugin for lots of different IDEs. Um, it's really good when you have to generate a lot of code at once. Uh, so if you want to look into that uh, and save a little bit of time from manually pumping out lots and lots of HTML, um, yeah, that's called Zen coding. It has a syntax. So uh, this here is essentially saying create a list item and inside of that create an anchor and then times that by five. Okay, so we can do that. Um, now I will just actually, sorry, that's not actually what I want to do. I want to create, so what that did was create five links inside of a single list item. What I want here is five list items with links inside them. That's what I want. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to create the first link linking back to this page, index.html, and the rest of them I'm just going to leave blank because I'm not creating any of these extra pages, uh, but I still want to I still want to have them there so that um, so that I can see what the layout looks like with them there. So I'll call this first one home, and then I'll go item one. Item two, item three, and then just because I want to test various different lengths of these, I'm going to put some longer name item here. Okay, all right, so that is my navigation. Then I have my uh, main content article here. Uh, in which I'm going to put a bunch of uh, paragraphs of just text. I'm just going to use Laura Mixon text. Again, I'm using Zen coding here just to pump that out really quick. So I've got a bunch of paragraphs there. I need a heading for this article. And okay, and inside of here, 
I'm going to have my first image, which will be images slash lobster uh, dog underscore thumb dot jpg. I think lobster. Yep, that should be right. Uh, now, I'm not giving you the hint, so I need to figure out how big it is. Oops, that's the wrong one. Okay, so this one is 200 by 250 pixels. Width 200 pixels. 50 pixels equals okay <clears throat> all right and somewhere a little bit further down I'll insert Oops, didn't close off that tag properly. There we go. Okay, lobster cat, which is 250 by 177. And give that an alt tag of lobster. Is that off? <clears throat> okay. Uh, Alright, now in the sidebar, we have, I'm going to put a heading 3 here. Alright, just put sidebar heading there. And then let's say some more generic text. And then I might just put in a Uh, I might just put in a list here. Okay, and maybe just one more. Bit of text. Okay, so we fill that out with some content. Uh, it should be it for the sidebar. And ooh, I did forget one thing. With my lobster dog, I forgot to link him to uh, the full size version of that image. So images slash lobster dog. JPG Okay, wrap that in the link Okay, now we'll go to the footer and all I want here really is a uh, paragraph uh, Containing a copyright symbol now, for this copyright symbol, uh, if you ever if you ever want to figure out what the correct syntax is uh, to write these, what you're looking for is HTML entities. So if you just search for HTML entities, um, you'll find a list of this kind of stuff. So any of these any of these uh, characters that aren't otherwise represented by a key that you can type directly on your keyboard. Uh, the way that you put them in is uh, either by the entity name or by the entity number. So for example if I want this copyright one down here uh, the syntax to put that in is the ampersand and then copy and then a semicolon. So I'll put that in now and I'm just going to write the year 
and then uh, my name. Uh, incidentally, just a side note, you don't ever have to put a copyright notice on your work. Your work is copyrighted as soon as you create it. Um, so do this by all means just to remind people, but, um, but as soon as you actually create your work under, under Australian law and under international law, your, your work is already copyrighted to you. Okay, so now this name here, I'm just going to wrap in a uh, link which uh, links to my email address. So to create the uh, link to the email address, the prefix is mail to colon and then the email address. So I'll use my real address there, not the one that's on Blackboard. Um, okay, and I think that's it pretty much. Okay, so we've got our content in there. We haven't styled anything, but we've got the structure and we've got the content. And I think this is a good time to see what it looks like in the browser. So I'm going to use Firefox 2. Take a look at this. Okay, so there's my content with no styles. And as I said, I think it's a good idea to, to do this uh, so that you can see that, this helps you see that the content is laid out um, from top to bottom in a logical order. Um, and it, and a, good thing, a good thing to highlight this is you could, po you could possibly debate, depending on how you want to lay out the sidebar, if you want a left sidebar, then it, you may think it possibly makes sense to place the sidebar code before the main content code. But by looking at it here without the style, what you're seeing is that what you're doing now, presumably this sidebar content is less important or less or should be less salient than the main content and you could you could have it you could order it this way and style it such that uh, it still appears less important but the the good thing about looking at it this way without styles is and this is something that you should aim for is that you should be able to see a content hierarchy in your your structure and your content alone without having to look at the styles. So to me, if I was looking at this and I'd done it this way, I'd say, no, I think if you're reading this page, I really think you should read the main content first before bothering about potentially looking at the, 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 the secondary aside information. So wherever possible, um, you, should, you should ignore the order of content for styling purposes and think of it only as part of your information hierarchy. So I'll set that back and to me that makes more sense. I get, I get my logo, I get the title of the page, I get a, uh, my navigation links, uh, then I get the article heading, the article content, some secondary information and then finally uh, the footer information down here. So to me, you, you may disagree, but to me, I feel like that's a pretty reasonable, uh, logical uh, information hierarchy for, for the content on this page. Okay, so if we can agree upon that, we can start adding some styles. So the first thing we need to do is, if we're going to create all of our styles in an external style sheet, we need to uh, link to this uh, style sheet. So, okay, so I'm going to do this uh, using the link, uh, the link element. Okay, with uh, the the rel attribute a style sheet type text CSS media all and then the href. 
uh, needs to be the path the the path relative to this HTML file where the the style is starsheet is located. So if it was located in a subdirectory, I need to type the name of the subdirectory just like my images, but it's in the same directory as my HTML file. So all I have to do is write the name of the style sheet. Okay, so it's pretty standard, pretty standard way of uh, embedding uh, an external style sheet. Okay. All right, so let's start adding some CSS. Now, the first thing I want to do is, well, obviously I want to create a CSS file. Call that style.css. Okay, um, let's just break that off. Okay, right, I'll do the best I can with this limited screen real estate. Okay, the first thing I want to do is uh, is get the get the basic layout of all these content blocks sorted. So the first thing I want to do is um, uh, create a um, let's see. I've got this div here called uh, container, so I will target it using the syntax hash container. Okay, and the way that we center align an object within the page is two steps. First of all, we give it a specific width, so I'll set the width here to be, uh, take your pick. I'm going to say 960 pixels, that seems to be a popular width. Um, and then the second part, okay, so we'll say that, make sure that's working already. Okay, there it is. And what I also like to do is um, initially I'm going to set a, a subtle background color just so that I can see where my, uh, where my content blocks are actually sitting. So, so background color, let's go something subtle. Okay, there it is. Okay, so there's my main content content block. So I can see exactly how wide it is now. And then to make it sit within the middle, we do margin zero auto. Okay, so meaning so meaning when we when we have two numbers for the margin, the first one represents the top and bottom margin, the second one represents the left and right margin. So top and bottom margins we set to be zero, and the uh, left and right margins we set to be auto. And that makes our content block, as long as it has a specific width, sit within the middle of the browser window. Okay, so we can change the width of the window and it will make sure that the margins either side of that are always the same. Okay, now, all right, what I like to do next is actually put some other colors on the backgrounds of these various content blocks just to, um, just, to, just to see where they sit, just to make sure there's no unexpected, uh, unexpected margins or padding uh, between them. So what I'll do is I'll uh, target the header element Okay, and notice it's an element, not an ID, so I'm just saying header. And I'll set the background color to... Uh, so what I'm going to do is just select some various different subtle colors so that I can see them, but they don't really get in the way of the legibility of my um, content. Okay, so header, we'll do one for the nav. And for the um, sidebar, I'm 
main content. Main content, let's make that. And then, because there's no real danger of the header and the footer ever being next to each other, we'll make the footer the same color as the header background. Okay. All right, so what we can see here already is that there is some unexpected distance between these content blocks that I haven't specified okay they're obviously coming in there from some sort of default styling okay so for example uh, let's take this element here okay and this is where I'm going to use firebug this is where it becomes incredibly useful okay so you can see me hover over, hovering over the h1 element there and what that what's that what that is showing me up there is uh, you can see a, a couple of color overlays on it. You can see the blue one over the text itself, and that shows me the dimensions of the uh, of the the content itself. And then you can also see the uh, yellow as well. Now the yellow there indicates the margin that it has, and you can see on the bottom there that it has ex exactly the amount of margin that this div here is being pushed down by it. Okay, so now I haven't put that margin on the heading one, but uh, it's taking the default style sheet from the browser and applying that. Okay, so every browser, it's not true to say that that first view that we looked at had no styles at all. It did have styles. The headings were bigger than the paragraphs, okay, for example. Um, every browser has its own default style sheet and unless you override those styles then those st those style sheets are going to are going to be applied so this is where a lot of frustration um, comes in uh, for a lot of beginning um, web developers because uh, you only expect it to really see the changes that you've made okay but pretty quickly you'll start to start to be able to identify the kinds of things that are going to create these issues for you so over here, uh, over here on the right, this is where it shows any styles applied to a particular element. So for example, I click on my container there, and there we can see the styles, uh, the background color margin and the width applied here. Now I can disable and enable these, okay, and see the changes immediately or even change the values. Okay, so I might, let's say I want to tweak this width a bit, let's say I want a little wider, I can tweak that there. Okay, and handily it also gives me a link to the exact line in my style sheet uh, that this exists on. So when you have a really huge style sheet and you're trying to find the offending style, then that's really useful as well. So what it doesn't show us for this heading one is the margin that is quite obviously being applied. If I click over to this layout tab, okay, even here it shows me the that it has no padding or border, but it has a margin. Okay, it has a 21 pixel margin. So what I can do is come back here and go show user agent styles. Okay, and this shows me all of the styles that are being applied to it. Okay, and as you can see here, it has a default font size. Okay, so that's why by default it's making the headings bigger. Uh, and as part of it, it also has a default margin. So it's got a 0.67 EMs margin on the top and bottom. Okay, now I can't disable them here, but what I can do is override them with my uh, own style sheet. So if you've, um, if you've ever looked into how CSS is applied, you might have seen that there's a particular hierarchy of, of how competing styles get uh, applied. Yep. Is there a way to make the changes that we put in your save into our document or? Uh, in Firebug? Yeah. Um, 
only if you copy and paste them. There's no automatic way. So yeah, that's a, that's a good point to mention actually. If you make any changes within Firebug, okay, let's say I get rid of the width. Well, let's, let's say I'm, I make the width bigger. Okay, uh, as soon as I reload this page, it's going to, this, this, is, this is only changing what the web page has loaded into its memory. It's not writing anything to your CSS file, which is good and bad. It's good because you can mess around with this and it doesn't screw up your CSS file, but it's bad because a lot of the time you'll get into this and you go, yes, I made all these changes, and then you'll accidentally refresh and go, ah, I lost them all. So as soon as you refresh the page, it's going to revert back to original. So, um, so your best bet is to just you can copy and paste the styles and, and take them back to your style sheet. But just remember that these changes that you make in Firebug they don't stick. Okay, they don't save. They don't save back to your file. Um, now, where was I? Oh, oh, oh there. Okay, so, um, yes, so we want to override this margin. So what I'm going to do is uh, target this element within my document. Ah, that's where I was. So, as I was saying, if you've ever looked into uh, the hierarchy of how styles are applied, um, there's, it has certain preferences. So there's user styles a little bit always be applied before user agent styles, so the browser styles. So the only time browser styles will be applied is if there's nothing else overriding them. So we can override all of the default browser styles by just writing our own styles for that element. Okay, so we will go back to our style sheet and we will go header h1, margin bottom, zero. Okay, so you can see it's moved up a bit. Expect that with Firebug again. Okay, so you can see there's no yellow um, border on the bottom. Uh, incidentally, if I add, uh, hang on, let me just run that. If I add some padding, okay, that will be identified by the purple section. Okay, so you can see the difference between your padding and your margin. Margin is very useful as well. I'll get rid of that. Okay, so where are we? There's my heading one. Okay, so you can see the margin at the bottom is gone, but this is still being pushed down. So it's likely that something within this element now has some sort of top margin. So I'm going to drill down into my nav section, and sure enough, the culprit is the unordered list. So there's my unordered list, and you can see it has the exact top margin uh, causing that space there. You can also see that it has padding on the left, which I'll ultimately want to get rid of. Um, but what I'll do, what I'll do now is I'll just get rid of that margin top and bottom of that unordered list inside my main nav. So I'll target that by going hash main nav. And making sure I target the unordered list, and we'll say margin zero top and bottom. So we just set it zero. I don't want any left and right margin either. Okay, there we go. So that's nice and snug up against there. I'm going to have a similar thing on this article heading. Now, if this one's slightly different, I could target this specifically. Um, but I want to I want to allow for the possibility that I may have several headings within an article. So what I'm going to do instead is of targeting it specifically is I'm going to use a, a pseudo selector called first child to identify just the first element of that particular div. So or that that particular parent element. So the parent element is the main container, sorry, main content. Now I could say heading two, colon first child, and I could set the margin top to be zero. 
okay, and that works, but I'm going to modify this slightly again because I can foresee that it's possible that a heading 2 might not be the first element in there. It might be a paragraph or another kind of heading. What I really want to do is make sure that no, um, that no element uh, has top margin that is the first element of this particular container. So what I'll do instead is replace this H2 with an asterisk, which just means anything, yep. So, so I've got their main content, and inside of that, anything that's the first child of that main content, uh, make the margin top be zero. And I can similarly, I should similarly be able to fix the same issue with the sidebar and the footer down here. So I'll do sidebar hash first child and footer. Sorry, not hash, star first child. Okay, so for all three of those containers, make sure that their first child, whatever it is, has no margin top. And likewise, actually let's just have a look at that first, the result. Okay, so that's gotten rid of a bunch of stuff. What I also want to do is um, make sure that the last child of each of these has no, um, no bottom margin as well. So what I'm going to do is duplicate that and instead of first child, I'm going to have last child. And whoops, margin top will be margin bottom equals zero. Okay, there we go. So now they're all nice and snug. No unexpected margins between the content of these. Um, and while I'm at it, I may as well add the uh, I may as well add the header here as a more generic term um, because again, the heading one might not necessarily be uh, the last element of the header. Um, so all I'll do is add header. First child, also set that margin top zero, and header, last child, margin bottom zero. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah? Okay, good. Alright, there we go. All right, so what I might do next is um, let's let's sort out this uh, let's sort out this um, let's sort out this heading one here. Actually, no, I'll leave that till later. What I'll do first is put a little bit of padding around. Um, no, I won't do that. What I'll do is sort out the sort out the layout of this main content and the sidebar section. Okay, so I want these to sit side by side, not on top of each other. And uh, I'm going to have the main content larger than the sidebar and uh, on the right and the sidebar sitting on the left. Okay, so and this should show you that you can sit the sidebar on the left even though in the HTML the, the the code for it, the the markup for it comes after the markup for the um, for the main content section. Okay, so we need our okay our main content section. We need a style for that, and we need a style for our sidebar. Okay, so first things first, we need to make them different widths and the total of their widths needs to be small enough to fit within that content section. 
So I could set them based on pixels, knowing that my container is 960 pixels wide. Um, but a more flexible approach, which will still work if I decide later on to change the width of my container, is to uh, set the width of those in some sort of um, relative unit. So for example, percentages. So what I can say is let's make the width of the main content to be say two thirds, 66%, and the sidebar to be the remainder. Okay, now if I just do that without doing anything else, okay, I can see there, are, there the two are. And what I need to do in addition to that is float them. So we'll float the main content right, and we'll float the sidebar left. Oops. Okay, there we go. Now, what you can see is... Hmm? Yeah, the footer. So what you can see is what usually always happens after you float something. The layout of stuff after it breaks. Okay, because floating elements takes them out of the regular flow. So what we need is to make this footer push down past the bottom of these two floated elements. And the way that we do that is to clear the floats. So we create a style for the footer, and we just say clear both. So clear both left and right floats. Okay, and then that puts that back down to the bottom. Okay, uh, let's see. All right, what I'm going to do now is um, And I think I'll leave that for now. Let's leave that. Let's leave that where it is for now. What I'll do next is uh, let's deal with this uh, this issue of the um, the header or the heading in the header section. So what I really want is for this uh, lobster pets to be over here somewhere. Now there's a couple of ways that we can achieve this. We can um, okay. So we could uh, float the thing right. So we've got the header, and we've got the heading one underneath that, and we can say float right. Okay, and then it puts it over here. There it is. It's still got its top margin, so that's why it's sitting uh, a little bit um, up, uh, a little bit down from the very top of its container. And then, if we want to push it down to the bottom, we could do something like saying, uh, giving it extra margin top. And then, just adjusting that until it sits kind of where we want it. Okay, so we could do something like that. Alternatively to that, we could, instead of, okay, so this is where I'd, if I decided on this approach, I'd go, yep, okay, got that. And then we'll copy and paste those styles back so that when I refresh, it remains there. Now, the other option you have, um, which is actually my preferred option because if I change the height of this header, I'd need to also change the top margin of that text to sit a bit further down. So the other option you have is to actually position this thing using something other than the default positioning. So if this is something, this is probably one of the more confusing concepts in CSS, but it's definitely worthwhile getting your head around because uh, I can make doing some more complex layouts a lot easier. So you have normal positioning um, which is called static and that just says position it wherever it happens to be uh, in the flow and then bump it one way or the other if you have margins or padding. Um, 
you've got other you've got other um you've got other types of position you can say position relative and then you can um, position it you can uh, pick a side and then and then um, bump it a, a certain distance from that side so let's say I pick position relative if I do that okay nothing much happens so I've taken out the floating and the margin and so it's back to where it was if I put um, left here now and I put 100 pixels okay then it bumps it 100 pixels from where it would otherwise be okay we need to position it relative to do that similarly we could do it minus 100 so that's a that's a good way of of um, what they call breaking out of the box or breaking out of the flow if you want an element that's positioned otherwise to what it, what it normally should be then you can use that and then you've got positioning absolute Okay, now if I position absolute left zero and top zero, okay, you can see it puts it at the very top of the page. Likewise, if I go bottom zero, right zero. Okay, it puts it at the very bottom of the viewport. Now, in and of itself, absolute positioning is not necessarily that useful unless you want to anchor something to the top of the screen, for example. Where it d does become useful is when you understand how it interacts with its container element. So, a simple definition of what absolute positioning does is that it puts it absolutely positioning based on pixel values based on the page, but that's not technically correct. What it does is it pos positions it absolutely based on the based on the location of its parent object, of its, of its nearest parent object which has relative positioning. Now because I don't have any other objects that are positioned relative then it's, it's using the root element, the HTML element to position, or the body element to position that but if I make its parent element, which is this header section, this green background section here, a position at relative, then all of a sudden by positioning bottom and right, it should sit more or less down over here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make another star for the header, and I'll say position relative. Okay, and I don't have to specify values for that, and it's not going to change how it lays out at all. But what it will do now is move the heading there. Okay, so, and the great thing about that is if I decide to make the header bigger, let's, um, okay, let's go here, make the header, let's say I make the header, um, okay, let's say I make the header 300 pixels tall. Okay, if I had to position this using floats and margin, I'd have to go and make that the margin on that another 300 pixels bigger. This way, it will anchor itself to the bottom uh, of the target. So that's kind of why that's my preferred method. There are some downsides, being that older browsers don't support it as well, but uh, I'm not really going to worry about that in this case. Okay, so there it is. Now we have it on the bottom left of the header section. Um, all right, next. All right, probably the only, probably the only other slightly challenging thing left to do here is going to be to lay out this uh, horizontal navigation. So let's do that next. Uh, and I can see I've made a small mistake here where my text is not inside my anchor tag. So I'll just fix that. Okay. okay, now all of my links there are clickable. All right. Okay, so let's try and do this kind of quick. I'm not going to bother about styling it up too much other than laying it out. So, as we can see, the 
navigation is, as I said, an unordered list, which contains some list items, which themselves contain some uh, anchor or link tags um, containing the name of the menu item. So the first thing I want to do, and this is what I'm talking about when I talk about the difference between block level and inline elements. So by default, a list item will style as a block level element. That means it doesn't matter how small the contents are, as you can see, it's going to take up the entire width of its container element available to it. So that means that the next item has to wrap around and go underneath it, it can't sit beside it. If we change this, um, if we change this um, display type from block level to inline, then what it will do is only take up as much room as is needed by its content, and then it can sit side by side. So that's what we'll do. We'll go. Uh, we'll target our nav. Sorry, we use the ID there. I think main nav um, on a list list item. Okay, and display. Okay, so by default it's block, and we're going to change it to inline. And there we go, now they sit side by side. If I inspect these again, you can see that they only take up as much width as they actually need. Now I want to style these a little bit more like buttons, so what I want to do is uh, give them some uh, padding. And I'm going to put the padding on the anchor tags themselves, and I'll explain why in a second. Padding 5px, 10px, that will do. Okay, now. Okay, um, okay, so now you can see um, now you can see there's a little bit more room around it. Now the reason that I added it to the anchor and not to the list item itself uh, is because essentially I'm just making the hit target bigger. If I added it to the list item, there'd be visually more space, but I'd still only be able to click on the text. So that's something kind of subtle, but um, but makes a difference. Um, now the only other thing I might do here is What I will do is, and I'm going to use Firebug to help me here, um, you can see the anchors now, they've got padding, they actually overflow their content a little bit. Now there's a few ways you can fix this, but I might just use the quick and dirty option just to save a little time. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to find out how tall that actually is. So it's 16 pixels tall plus um, five pixels of padding, so I want to make this at least 21 pixels high, this uh, navigation menu. Or I could just add the same amount of padding actually, that's probably easier. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now you can see it fits a bit more nicely within there. Okay, so where are we? Padding. Okay, so while I would 
come back and restyle this text. I'm not going to bother too much about that now, but what I want to do is just style these so they have different hover states and active states. So what I'm going to do is um, uh, let's say let's put a let's put a background color on these. Let's say um, mm, let's say by default it's a light background color. So let's make that even lighter. I think. Okay, so a lightish background color and with dark text. So let's go set the color to be black. Uh, we'll go, yeah, I'm just modifying this enough so that I can change the style and it's obvious when I hover over them. Okay, so to create the hover effect, we want to use another pseudo class. Okay, we're going to use uh, the hover pseudo class, so we're going to take this same style, but we will add the pseudo class hover. So all these times that I have an element and I use colon hover, they're called pseudo classes. So if you want to look more into them, that's what you need to search for, um, CSS pseudo classes, P-S-E-U-D-O classes. Okay, so on the hover state, I can change whatever I like about it. In this case, I'll, I'm just going to flip sort of the background color and the um, and the and the text color. So I'll make the background color um, dark, and we'll make the text color white. Okay, that's how you do easy hover over effect. And the other thing. The other thing that the requirements that I posted were was to have a, um, a current link state. So it's usually good to aid the user's um, mental, what we call the mental model of their website, where in their head they think they are, how they're navigating and how they interact with the interface. Um, and one of the very simple ways of doing that is to make it obvious which of these menu items is the one that they're currently looking at. So the way that we do that is we simply choose one of these list items and um, and give it a class. Oops. So we'll go class current or call it what you want. Let's say active page or active link. I don't know. Call it call it whatever you want, but we'll give that one a class. And all we're going to do is. Now we could create a separate style and start slightly different again um, for just to save a bit of time. All I'm going to do is apply this same style to the active state. So we'll go same style, target the, uh, target the A tag, but this time specifically the one that has a class of active, uh, active link. Okay, and there we go, there's the one that has that class. And then obviously when you click to a different page, then you'd have in the syntax, in the HTML, you'd have a different one with the active class. Okay. So pretty simple to do, but it aids navigation. Um, and, and, and very subtle, and, and lots of the lots of these things are really subtle, but they make really quite a big difference. I'm going to look up there and know that I'm on the home page on item one or whatever. And as you can see too, the reason that I wanted to add this extra name is because quite often a way that you do these will be to specifically set the width of each one and then float them, um, which is okay. But it means if you all of a sudden decide to make your add another menu item or make it longer, then you have to go back and, and, and hack in new values in the code. Um, this way it, it incorporates um, any given length there, provided that you don't have so many that they run off the end. Ah, uh, okay, now, all right, how much time we got left? 15 minutes, all right, we should be able to, should be able to knock this out. Um, all right, next we're gonna do the floating of the images, left and right. So this is pretty easy. Um, 
Obviously, we're going to have a need to make a star where one floats left and one floats right. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do this in a particular way. I'm not gonna style the specific images themselves. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new class called dot um, float left and dot float right. And I'll, I'll make these specific to anything that's inside of the main content. So main content and then any element underneath main content that has a class of float left and likewise float right. Okay, now obviously I'm going to go float left and float Right. Okay, and I'm going to apply those to these uh, different images. So I'll start with I'll start with the uh, second one first because it's going to be the simpler example. It's going to add class float left. Okay, and now I've something up. That's why I replaced the source. Okay, that should be better. There it is. Okay, so now uh, the text wraps around it like this. Um, now the reason that I wanted to create a class for this was so I could reuse it for multiple elements, but also that I could combine multiple styles. So anytime I'm going to want to float it left, what I want to make sure is that there's a nice margin to the right uh, of the image. And likewise, when I float it right, I want to make sure there's a nice margin on the left. So I'm going to go back here and just go, uh, where are we, float left, and go margin. Now, I'll make sure there's a margin on the top right and bottom, but not on the left, for floating it left, and likewise on the right, I'm going to make sure there's a margin on the top, but not the right, yes on the bottom, and yes on the left. Okay, so it probably needs to be a bit bigger. Okay. And tweak that later, but that's basically the effect that I want. Now this one over here, uh, now this is the one which, okay, I've already got it clicking going to the large image, that's fine. For this one I'm going to add the caption to, so uh, I need to add that up here. So I'm going to go paragraph, and I'm going to give this one a class of image caption. And there we go, lobster dog. Okay, there it is. Um, now, what I'm going to do is just style this up similar to, well, the same as what you saw in the, the screenshot before. I'm going to just make it kind of look like a you know, white border Polaroid kind of shot with the, the writing on the bottom. So the way that I'm going to do that is to wrap it in a div. And I'm going to call, give that a class of captioned image. Okay, and now the captioned image is going to have a background of white. Uh, it's going to have a some padding of, I don't know, 10 pixels. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, and it is going to, let's uh, give it a border. Okay, so you can see the captions taking up the whole thing. But as soon as I add 
in addition the captioned image the float right class as well okay it should float it to the right okay so it's floating to the right and it's giving it the top left and bottom margin now I can add a couple more styles to make this caption a little bit nicer so we'll go dot captioned image and I oh, actually don't I'll just go image caption class with my paragraph uh, I'll text align center uh, text declaration none uh, actually I'm gonna need to make that specifically a Let's ignore that for now. That's not that important. Okay, so that's the basic layout of that. As you can see, because I put the caption and the image itself into one, um, in, in, in inside of the uh, A tag, then the whole thing, both of those are clickable, so I can click on the image as well as the, the caption. Um, and, That's actually pretty much what I want to do with that. Uh, let's see, what else? Maybe we can, uh, let's, let's maybe add a, um, let's add a subtle hover effect on this caption image. So it's more obvious that it's a clickable link. So remember you can use the hover pseudo class on any element, it doesn't just have to be a link. So you can say background color change from off white to full white. Ooh, hang on. Background color is what I want. Okay, now we get a hover effect. Okay, that needs a lot more work styling that to look nice, but you get the idea. Um, what else? I guess we better uh, fix up this footer a little bit. So the footer looks very really cramped down there. So let's give it some padding of, uh, let's say, 2ems0. And... Uh, Let's also go text align center. Might be nice. Hey, there we go. So we've got a bit more space in the footer, and and we've center aligned it there. So we basically got got our layout figured out now. The the thing I'd do next is um go in and put some more padding and and, and space these things out a bit more nicely. But um, other than that, that's that's pretty much it. Um, so I might stop there, it's a pretty good place to stop. Um, from this point you'd really just start now uh, experimenting with uh, finer details of your layout, as I said, spacing and padding. Um, paying attention to things like you want a nice reading width for your fonts and your different columns and stuff. Um, and then you probably get rid of these background colors and start putting in an actual color scheme uh, into, the, into the design. Um, but that's that's a that's I think that's a good place to stop um, because I think once you've got the the general layout and the structure down, um, and it's, I think it's good to do this before assigning all the colors and stuff to it because if it's readable just with the layout alone, um, which as I said I'd, I'd add a bit more spacing uh, to here and here for example and between these things, but if it's if it's readable with that alone then. Um, you've got a pretty good foundation for then um, filling out the, uh, the color scheme. Okay, so uh, I'll stop there. Um, as I said, uh, I will post the I'll post the code for this completed version of it uh, towards the end of the week. Um, so if you can make sure you have a go at it by then, uh, before then, and then you can have a look if you want to look into any greater detail. 
Um, there's going to be things in this version, which I did last year or the year before, that are going to be different to what I did then. Um, just because, as I said, there's lots of ways of doing things. I'm not necessarily saying that the, my way is the best way. It's just a way. Um, and if you develop a, a different way of doing things, um, then, then that's totally fine. Okay, all good. We'll see you next week then. Thank you.